Hi everyone, welcome back. In my last video, I provided a quick introduction to Voronoi, and if you haven't watched that, I definitely urge you to do that by watching video number 273. Yeah, it should be about Voronoi. Why am I urging you to do that? Because that concept is what we are trying to use as part of this video to achieve object segmentation without a lot of effort. We are not gonna use any deep learning. We are gonna just use plain, old vanilla image processing techniques that includes Voronoi and Otsu-based image thresholding, that's it. And thanks to these guys from Pike Lesperanto, this is an amazing library if you are interested in image analysis, uh, image segmentation, especially for scientific images, but of course in general, this is these, these principles can be applied to any image segmentation and other tasks. So in the next two, three uh, videos, I'm gonna focus on uh, the benefits of this library using different examples. And of course, if you go to their library page, you can find similar content, but this is, I'm providing you the same content as a video format. Okay, so without any delay, let's go ahead and jump into the code, but well, there is some delay because I want to summarize what we are going to do as part of the code. We are going to take an input image and as step one, we are going to apply Gaussian blur. Why? Because it makes it easy for us to find the centers or you know peaks within each of these uh, blurred regions and then we are going to exclude uh, locations from the background because you may have some noisy areas in the background you don't want like a lot of little things here so this is one way of uh, cleaning your data up and then you separate these using Voronoi into different regions and within each Voronoi region you apply a uh, segmentation that's it and the Pike Lesperanto library is gonna make our life easy in not writing a lot of code to get this thing done. So let's jump into the code. And I guess I should talk about the Pike Lesperanto library before jumping into the code. Just uh, uh, on GitHub, just search for Pike Lesperanto underscore prototype. You should be able to find that uh, or I am going to include that as part of my code anyway, and also as part of the description down uh, uh, under this video. So what do you find, uh, sorry, I accidentally opened Chrome, I stopped using it. I'm using Edge now, so let me get back to this page. Okay, uh, this is, uh, I'm gonna show you 2D segmentation a couple of ways, and I'm also going to show you 3D segmentation in one of my upcoming tutorials. If you can't wait, then go ahead and go through this, uh, go through this documentation and get started. They have many, many examples. Again, I am going to show you most of the stuff that they covered right here. But if you think that my explanation makes your life easy, keep continuing uh, to watch this video. Okay, let's jump in. So first thing first, what uh, Python version am I using? Oh, first of all, how do you install PyClus Parento library? Very straightforward. I did not go need to go through any, any uh, hoops, jump through any hoops. It was very straightforward. I just followed the link, just, uh, just install, sorry, just followed whatever they suggested. So pip install. That's it. I mean, first conda install and then pip install. Yeah, so it worked like charm for me. Okay, now coming back to the Python version and it worked like charm on what version of Python? I'm using 3.7.11. So it works very well right there. So let's go ahead and import our matplotlib library to plot, of course, and pyclesperanto underscore having trouble saying it, pyclesperanto underscore prototype, S-C-L-E, and I'm also going to import scikit image so we can read our images. So let's go ahead and do that. And I have a test image. Let's go ahead and import it and let me plot so you can see exactly the type of image. This is exactly the one I used in the last video. So let's go ahead and use that. Now, let's, uh, let's use GPU. In this case, this is a very small image, but if you're working with, uh, for example, 3D data sets, then GPU can be very useful. Again, this is not deep learning. I'm not trying to do any deep learning here, but uh, these guys, uh, 
you know, made, made these tools available, so why not go ahead and use it? So first of all, let's see what type of OpenCL devices are there. I mean, do I even have like GPUs that are compatible? So let's go ahead and print it, and I have two Quadro P5000 uh, GPUs on my system, so it can use it. So let's go ahead and uh, set my device. This is completely optional. If you do not do any of this, it still works, except it doesn't use GPU. That's pretty much it, okay? So uh, just skip from here to there if you're not planning on using a GPU, okay? So since I plan on using it, let's go ahead and define the device and what device am I using? It's used GPU is Quattro P5000 and NVIDIA CUDA, blah, blah, blah. So we are all set. Now I need to take my image that I have in my CPU memory. I need to push it to GPU and with Clasperanto, we do cle.push, and this pushes the image right there. And now my new image that's accessible to the code is called img or is uh, uh, under the variable img underscore GPU. So what is the size of this image? Let's go ahead and print right there. It's 256 by 256. That's a rectangular. I mean, that's the image right there. Okay, so far so good. And the Clasperanto library has many, many, many tools and Imshow is something that I use quite often. So let's go ahead and print it. And there is no reason why this image should be any different than the other image that I stored in CPU. So this is the one that I'm printing from the GPU. That's it. So ignore everything if you're not using GPU. Ignore everything and only just start by importing your image, Imshow, and then just start uh, working on your image. So what are we trying to do? Step one, I divided this into many steps uh, to make it easy to follow. Step one is uh, just Gaussian, Gaussian blurring. I only have like one line of code right there, but I added a lot of text just so you're focused on uh, using this tool. I mean, heavy Gaussian blurring, for example. Uh, it's it, it assists in detecting the maxima, but then what type of Gaussian blurring, it completely depends on your uh, image. What is the best Gaussian blurring depends on your image. So let me apply a sigma of 12. That's pretty heavy, <laughs> Gaussian blurring. So let's go ahead and look at the image. There you go. You can decrease it and see how things change, but it's, it's up to you. I'm using uh, 12 and you may have to experiment with your image. Okay, now that I have a blurred image, let's go ahead and find the peaks within each. Uh, and uh, this is where you can use detect maxima box right there. So it finds the maximum locations for each blob or object that you have. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, image maxima locations and how is it stored. Let's go to variable explorer and it is a stored as an object. So we can extract information from this and we'll do that uh, in a minute. So going down, first of all, how many maxima locations did it find? Well, I'm interested in that because it tells me how many objects did it find, right? So that's what how many maxima locations basically means. So number of maxima locations is basically you take your image maxima locations the one that we, the object that we have there, and then just use sum of all pixels. And uh, let's go ahead. And number of detected maxima locations is right there. Okay, so I know that now I have 12 different uh, objects. So let us go ahead and view them along with the corresponding maxima locations. So there you go. So this is the blurred image. I'll zo digitally zoom onto this image, but you can see some of these tiny dots, tough to see in general, but I guess you can kind of see them right there. Okay, so now that we have these, we can separate them using Voronoi. Okay, so how do you do that? Using Lesperanto library. By the way, we did the exact same exercise using SciPy library in the last video, but, but, but the Lesperanto library has much more tools designed for image analysis. So that's why we are using these tools right now. So up to this point, you may think it's straightforward. We have done this in SciPy, but wait a minute <laughs> right there. So uh, I did that Gaussian blurring over there just to find the peak locations. Now I'm doing another Gaussian blurring right here so that I can threshold these uh, regions. And for that, I do not want high sigma. I'm just using sigma equals to one. Again, once you see the output, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. 
Uh, so I just, this is a Gaussian blurred image with very small sigma. Previously, we used a sigma of 12. Now I'm using a sigma of one. A Little bit of blurring because it assists with my Ortsu thresholding. Yeah, that's why I'm doing that a little bit of uh, blurring. So remember these two sigmas, one for thresholding, one for finding the peak. Why should you remember that? In the next video, I'm gonna show you how all of this is going to be single line, <laughs> okay? I want to make sure you get the concept first and then the easy shortcuts later. Okay, so let's threshold this Gaussian blurred image. Let us go ahead and threshold it and go ahead and view all of these at once. So both of these, so that's our input image and that's the thresholded part. If you just apply a regular threshold, then this piece, for example, would be a bit weird. You know, you have a bright spot there, bright spot there, so the auto threshold probably would be confused a little bit because all we are doing here is auto thresholding, right? Using Otsu. So by blurring them a little bit using Gaussian blur, we are assisting this auto threshold in not confusing very uh, uh, too much. Okay, that's what we have done right there. Okay, now uh, exclude the maximum locations from the background. So in this case, I'm not sure. I mean, you can probably see like a little dot right there. Hopefully that will be gone, uh, but maybe that's real. You see a slight edge right there. But in case you have some background intensity variations, and if you have like any little dot spread over there, this can be, this can be uh, uh, very helpful in excluding these locations. So let's go ahead and do that. All I'm doing is binary and image threshold and image maxima locations, right? So, uh, okay, so basically uh, I'm looking at, okay, is my maxima location at, uh, where I have my thresholded image? If so, yes, keep that. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm trying to do right here. Okay, and now let's look at number of uh, relevant locations. It's probably still 12 because I don't see much of anything going on in the background. So I'm adding this step in case your image is a bit more complex than my image. That's it. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at all of these. These two should be identical before and after right there because we don't have much going on in the background. Okay, now comes uh, water noise separation. Now that we have the data points, what do we do? You can apply a masked Voronoi labeling. What that does is it creates a Voronoi map regions. It separates your uh, region, I mean, your image into these Voronoi regions. Within each region, it applies a mask so that it can uh, perform your labeling operation. That's exactly what that step does. I hope that makes sense. If not, you should go back to the basics of image processing and try to understand all those ter that terminology. So right here, so we have an image. We got certain data points right there. We used Voronoi to separate them. And within each separated region, within each separated region, we are segmenting these objects. And if you remember right here, we only have a single dot, even though we have two objects right there. We have two objects right here. And when I blurred it, they got blurred to the point where it only shows a single point right here. It only shows a single point right there, which means this object got wrongly segmented as a single object, which is fine. Now we need to apply watershed to separate them. I'm not gonna show that. I have done watershed in many videos, but uh, since I'm going to show you an easy way in the next video, I'm going to skip that watershed part. But if you are curious, you can change this. Uh, you can change this. Where was our first sigma? You can change this first sigma to, let's change that to nine and see what happens. Yeah, let's run the entire thing. And is that any better? Do we get like two segmentations? Yeah, we did get two right there. That fixed it, you see? I mean, it's unfortunate it painted them in green, but this is lighter green and that's a darker green. These are two different objects right there. So if I started with sigma uh, equals to nine, that actually is doing a much better job. So this is how you play with these two sigmas. One, to find the peaks. The other, to, uh, uh, to, to actually apply your thresholding. Okay, so I hope uh, this makes sense to you. I mean, the traditional image analysis has a lot of power. Yeah, deep learning is cool, but uh, but but it's an overkill in uh, in in uh, these type of cases. So here it's a it's pretty straightforward method. And again, in the next video, I'm going to show you how all of this can be just single line. 
Okay, so please stay tuned for that and do not forget to subscribe to this channel.